Welcome to 28 Days and Beyond. Where we talk about our history, our heritage, and our culture. I'm Amari. I'm Charisma. Welcome back. Hey, Charisma. Hello, Amari. How's it going? It's going well. That's what's up. How about you? How are you doing? Uh, doing all right. Good. Doing all right. right. Here's a question for you. Okay. Oh, you got a question for me? No, go ahead. No, no, no. Go Don't ahead. let me mm -hmm. steal your thunder. Hey, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you a fan of reality television? Sometimes. Are you a fan of activity and challenge-based reality television? Yes. Tell and me more. I, and ironically, mm -hmm. my question for you was going to be, what? are you a fan of challenging yourself in real life? Oh, I so see. In we real life. Same, yeah, see, now I think you were going a little bit deeper than me. No, I, little, I, little bit I, deeper. I'm, just, I'm just saying. We're yeah. on the same wavelength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to answer you your first. question, absolutely not. No. Just no, path that. of least resistance. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah. Definitely, I mean. Like, uh, at all? No, 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 no. I, I, you know, I try to, you know. Put in a little bit of, I like a little bit of discomfort. Okay. You know, not an extreme amount. Actually, I was reading a book recently by David Goggins. You know mm -hmm. this guy, the I Black don't. Navy SEAL? I don't. Yo, look him up. Dude is crazy. He, um, he, he went through what they call Hell Week in the, in the Navy SEALs, right? Mm -hmm. Three times he had to do it. It's like that Three rigorous times. training where they basically just leave him with no sleep and put him in the cold and whatever. He had to run with two broken legs and wow. he did it. Since then, he's turned into this like ultra you know, ultra marathoner, I meaning he's running 100 miles, so on and so forth, right? So wow. after reading that book, I was like, oh, I think I might need to take myself <laughs> a little bit more seriously. Well, I'm not a marathon runner, so Word. I will not be following in his footsteps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, part, part, <laughs> of his, part, of his, part of his larger thing was that we as humans are capable of so much more Very than we true. allow ourselves to be, and part of that is by exposing yourself to discomfort and, and, yeah. and you know, challenges. Well, so I used to be really afraid of heights, like really afraid of heights, like terrified, like would not get on roller coasters or anything up high. Mm. But I'm one of those people where if something scares me, like I have to do you gotta it. You got to do it. Right? So I remember we went on this like trip, and um, it was this obstacle course, and everything is like really high up. Yeah. So you climb up this pole that's like higher than telephone poles, and you're connected to a wire like above your head yeah. and that's it and you have to walk across another plank of wood that's thinner yeah. with just this wire and nothing so you're like tight rope walking i cried the whole way across it yeah. but as soon as i got across it it was like oh i'm still alive so and so wait so you're no longer afraid of heights no so it just took that yeah i agree with this philosophy because i actually want to jump out of a plane because it scares the believing jesus the, what is the so believing we'll jesus it. It, it, what <laughs> I want to jump out of a plane yes. because, you know, because it scares me so much. Yeah. Well, we're talking about challenges and defeating challenges. And to bring it all full circle, do what you reality do. TV, hey. our guest today See how we did that. won season 36 of Survivor. One. One. Like, oh, you ain't tell me it, that. Like, took it home. Whoa, what? Took home the prize. For real? <laughs> yes. So our guest today is Wendell Holland. He won season 36 of Survivor. He's here today with us, and we're going to talk about his experience on the show, going through all the challenges and the craziness. Are you excited? Yes. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take a break, but we'll be back with more 28 Days and Beyond right after this. Welcome back to 28 Days and Beyond. We are now joined by Wendell Holland. The winner. The winner. Of season 36 of the Survivor episode. I mean, what is it called? Survivor. 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 Just, just Survivor. I don't have TV, so I don't know about these just things. Survivor. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He What's won? up, man? Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad to be here. So that's crazy. It is You crazy. won. Yeah. It was uh, it was crazy out there actually. Yeah, it wasn't easy. Uh, break it down. What were some of the challenges? What, uh, you well, know, before the... we even get there, what made you want to do Survivor? There you go. Because okay. I mean, yeah, because you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to. It's <laughs> not something they force you to do. You know, uh, I I'd been a fan of the show for some time, watching it, and I thought that my skill set, um, growing up playing a lot of sports, um, and you know, different travel experiences and interacting with different people from all across the country mm -hmm. and all across the world, yeah. I thought this skill set of mine would be transferable to a game like Survivor and would allow me to do well in a game like Survivor. So, watched it for a long time, was a fan, of, I applied many times and I finally got on. Wow. Yeah. So, what's up? Walk us through. You get there and like, <laughs> so obviously there's things they show and there's a whole bunch that they don't, yeah. so yeah. what's up? Well, uh, it's, it's very real. You're really out there on an island starving. We were in Fiji. Fiji. Um, consists of about 350 different islands, and we were across like 10 different islands mm. competing. Um, they put 20 Americans out there, and last man standing pretty much wins. <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah, the competitions were cool. A lot of things like run into the ocean, grab a big chest with your, your tribe, bring it out, uh, crack some kind of code on the, on the chest, pull some puzzle pieces out and complete a puzzle or something like that. So lots of cool challenges. Wow. Yeah. Do you have a favorite challenge, like looking back out of everything? I, I liked the challenges that ended with puzzles, because I'm good at puzzles, mm -hmm. I'm good at visual puzzles. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, because I, I build things and I piece things together by trade, that's what I do. Yeah. Um, so it was good to get like the puzzle ones because I was able to really excel at those ones. And then, of course, there's the interpersonal aspect of it. you got to deal with other people who you don't know yeah. who are also in, you know, adverse circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. What was that like? So the game of Survivor is traditionally it's about like lying, cheating and stealing. Exactly. And backstabbing. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And you take this ridiculous cross section of Americans like country boys, you know, surfers. You take Texans, you take all these city people, you take all these people and put them together on an island in this social experiment to see how they uh, build relationships mm -hmm. and how they work together and some ultimately backstab you and whatnot. So I wanted to kind of play a clean game and be like the good guy out there and play very hard. Um, I wanted to win, so if I would have had to backstab anyone, I probably would have, but I didn't really have to, I didn't get much blood on my hands out there. Nice. And um, so that's a testament to, I guess, me playing for like my family and you know my little niece and nephew who will ultimately watch when they grow up a little more mm -hmm. um, and just knowing what I was playing for and uh, yeah so wow I did I took the non-traditional approach and I tried to be the good guy out there and it, yeah. it actually worked well one of the things I think about when I think about survivors you know you're out there in the wilderness you have to fend for yourself you have to start fires you have to get your own food when you're able to eat so can you talk about just the physical aspects of like the challenges yeah. you had to endure yeah well um Eating was difficult. Obviously, you don't have anything. We had a spear to fish with. So I was out there. That's real. That's not like <laughs> straight TV. up. Wow. They, we had a spear to fish with. Like, imagine <laughs> me just going in the ocean. Yeah. And, you, and you, don't, you don't have any prior experience with that. I have no experience <laughs> spear fishing. I promise you. You have spear fishing experience so, uh, of work. We, uh, we uh, some crazy things. It was, <laughs> we, I, I caught like a couple little fish, whatever, but the amount of energy you're exerting to catch a fish. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to like, I can go find a coconut laying on the ground and just chop a coconut gotcha, open yep. that. So yeah. I ate a lot of coconuts, mm. uh, like snails and stuff. We had to eat snails. Uh, I got some conch out there. Have you guys ever yeah. had conch before? Yeah. Obviously, Bahamas, yeah. um, we get lucky sometimes and catch a crab, but one little crab spread amongst ten tribe members. That's like. Right. A half of a leg. That's a why I bother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. Do I want to exert that much energy just for that? Now, how do you how do you prepare for something like that? Can you prepare? You didn't know what you were getting into. Okay, so with me, I'd been a fan for a long time, yeah. so I've studied the game. There's like strategy to it, you know. There's if my alliance member gets blindsided, how do I come back to camp and react to that? You know, there's strategy behind it, and um, but also I I'm at, I'm an athlete, so I've always I did a lot more cardio, um, did a lot more like puzzles and games and stuff yeah. getting ready for it that's wow. what's up man well we definitely want to hear more about your survivor yeah, challenge so and life after survivor but we have to take a break but we'll be back with more 28 days and beyond right after this welcome back to 28 days and beyond we are still here with wendell holland talking all things survivor yeah and more and, and more. more and more um so how long was the entire experience from start to finish um they kind of marooned us on an island and then we were out there for 39 days. Those of us that made it to the end. Yeah. Wow. Three people make it to the end. Wow. The preceding 10 people then vote for the winner. And then you win. And then I Did win. you see that coming? Uh, in my audition tape, I said, my last line was, put me on this island and I'm going to win. Wow. I was confident in myself. You spoke it into existence. There it is. But I mean, you know. Uh, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other people who <laughs> well, said that. I'm that's sure, the thing. I'm sure, but. <laughs> I said it in all my audition <laughs> tapes. <laughs> <laughs> they finally took that one. Word yeah. up. So, um, so what happens now when you land back in, you know, yeah, so I get back home and I'm down 26 pounds. So mm -hmm. I come back 150 something pounds. I'm this like shell of myself, you yeah. know, I'm this little scrawny fool. And uh, I go to my parents' house and they're just looking at me like, man, something happened to you on this island. Because it doesn't air as it's happening. No. no. So, so I, I had to wait. So I was on the show and I knew I won yep. Survivor. Yep. This dream of mine. And I got home and I had to wait eight months until my season eight aired. Eight months. I had to watch another season of Survivor between me knowing I won and my That's season. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So what does it feel like? Like now that the whole process is over, you won, you did this big accomplishment for yourself. Like how does that feel? It feels great. I feel like, you know, when you when you set goals for yourself and you accomplish them, it's it's a tremendous feeling. And for mm -hmm. me, Survivor was something that I, I dreamt about, you know, and it was something that I wanted to do, but you never really think that something as wild as a, a game like Survivor or a yeah. reality show or whatever, mm -hmm. you never think you'll, you'll get on that. So when I got on and accomplished it, I was, I was 
I was and I am just at the top of my game. You know, I feel like I feel like I could do anything. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Speaking of anything, that's not the only thing you've it done. It's not, not the right. only thing that you're up to. Right. What else do you have going on? So I started a furniture company based here in Philadelphia. Um, it's called Beeve Unlimited. And what we do is we make furniture out of reclaimed wood. Mm. So okay. I was looking around at the aesthetic in here, like these things, we make tables that look like this, you know, uh, we make um, desks, beds, whatever you could think of, we build that. It's amazing. And what brought you to that? Um, I needed a bed at one point for myself <laughs> and I was cheap and wow. I was resourceful and I'd been handy and creative. Mm -hmm. And so I built my own bed and then it was, it was a beautiful piece of art. So I was like, man, maybe I could sell this on Craigslist yeah. and see what I could do. Yep. And that sold pretty fast on Craigslist. And I was just like, all right, there's a market for this. Wow. Made a few more, they sold. And then through word of mouth and you know, the snowball effect, it, uh, it, it kind of took off a little bit. Well, hold up, you said made a few more. So, like, <laughs> it, you don't just wake up and be like, I'm gonna make a bed today. I'm gonna make a bed. <laughs> Is that, you know what I'm saying? Like, so what's, obviously there's more going into it than yeah. just like, you know. So like, I, I brought some of my friends in, showed them things. They helped me out. The process got a lot faster. Um, the first bed took me three weeks to make. Then the next few mm. took me a lot shorter, yeah. way shorter. Yeah. You know, I could make, I could make a bed in a day. Now. I build a bed frame in a day now. Mm. So, wow. um, it was a learning process. It still is, but that's what art is. That's what cre being creative is. So, um, that's where I'm at now. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Are there some other things that you're looking forward to in terms of your company building and growing, things that you want to get into? Yeah, so right now what we do, we do all custom pieces. So mm -hmm. everyone that reaches out to us, they all have something different or unique that they want. But mm. um, So that means I'm physically in the shop with my guys every day pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, what I want to do is build a line, a specific line of furniture, five, ten pieces Word. that then, you know, now I'm just designing and then I could scale up and, and teach people mm -hmm. how to make these pieces and I don't have to, then I can be, you know, thinking about growing my business as opposed to chopping wood every day. Yeah. That's so man. that's the business, that's the next step in the business. So where can people find you and support your business? Yes, so um, on Instagram, that's like where you can find a lot of our work. Our, our handle is Beeve Unlimited, it's at B-E-V-E -E Unlimited. And then for myself, my name's Wendell Holland, at Wendell Holland or WendellHolland.com. Okay, that's amazing. Yo, once again, I, I gotta know. step my game up in life. That's how we've been having this I'm conversation like, right, cool. every Maybe time I need we get to run a mile like every you. day. <laughs> but now it's like I need to start building beds. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Building something. Things. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, if there was There's any takeaway from today's conversation. <laughs> well, Wendu, thank, yeah, we thank you so much for joining, for joining us. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more 28 Days and Beyond right after this. And we're back with more 28 Days and Beyond. Charisma. Amari. What a wonderful conversation. That was awesome. For real. Really, it was. I mean, you gotta learn the spearfish. It's a challenge I'm willing to try, <laughs> you know, to accept. I, I certainly think. Uh, well, you are a pescatarian, so it just makes sense. It makes sense. I'll right? be able to know how to, you know, kill my own food. But the food that I be eating, you know, all this farm raised. Anyway, I that's know. neither here nor there. But check it. I, 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 first of all, it's fascinating. Everything mm -hmm. about it. I'm always interested with these reality shows since they are, you know, such large productions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, at what point are you making television? And, and uh, you know, at what point are you just documenting what's already yeah. happening? Yeah. I know? mean, it would seem just. I feel like just the setup, right? You're on this deserted island, or he said a series of 10 islands, yeah. and you're taken through all of these challenges, and it's like a challenge within a challenge because you're dealing with all the physical challenges, and then you're dealing with the emotional challenges, and then the actual challenges that the game presents. And not I mean, to mention, it's like, you hungry. Listen, hangry? when I'm hangry, yeah. I'm barely functional. Yeah. Literally. Exactly. You probably yeah. like it's just a real unpleasant experience I'm for. I'm such a better person when I eat. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That Kudos Snickers commercial was modeled off of me. Yeah. yeah me yeah, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So there's that. There's obviously that that yeah. aspect of it. But you know, I think that's. I mean, y'all ain't tell me he won. You know what I'm saying? Like I heard <laughs> Surprise. when you. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Which I just think that's amazing. It is. But more than that, though, I mean, even just the, the idea that that um, you know we've talked about entrepreneurship on this show several times. Right. Yeah. But I'm still kind of convinced that there's an entrepreneurial spirit that the same thing that would allow you to challenge yourself to you know kind of test your limits, mm -hmm. right, physically, emotionally, is the same thing that would allow you to just be like, yo, I'm gonna make a bed. Oh, this is cool. Let me go ahead and say, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's I agree. great. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the idea of being an entrepreneur is, is having these, you know, ideas or concepts or things that you're good at and really taking a skill set in some form and turning it into something that you can build and grow into a business. Yeah. So 
that in itself is like a level of bravery Word. because it is not an easy feat to be an entrepreneur yeah. at all by any yeah. means. So. Definitely so. It's cool that we have more entrepreneurs coming on the show and mm -hmm. talking about their, what they're doing. Um, we can follow, you know, Beef Unlimited mm -hmm. on Instagram, see the beds, the tables, and all the other cool things they make. All so. custom pieces for now. All custom pieces. But, uh, yeah, I think that, you know, even that, saying he's trying to, you know, he already has a vision for expansion yeah. of where he wants to take it. I just think that's real cool. It's real resourceful. Mm -hmm. um, and in the spirit of Black History Month, if you will. Yes. I think that's, that's, that, that is the true black excellence, right? And I think that that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. Um, so we'll look forward to seeing what it is that he has going on. Yep. And, and, and definitely following. we'll continue to support. Definitely so. Yes, that's what's sir. up. This has been another episode of 28 Days and Beyond. Where we talk about our history, our heritage, and our culture. We'll see you next time. Peace.